All right. Um, good afternoon, clearly. Um, as you know, over the weekend, the Secretary General took part in the G7 summit in Hiroshima in Japan. In a press conference on Sunday, the Secretary General stressed that rich countries cannot ignore the fact that more than half the world, that's the vast majority of countries, are suffering through a deep financial crisis. He added that recovery from the pandemic has been extremely unbalanced, with many middle-income countries not qualifying for concessional funding and having no access to debt relief. The Secretary General underscored that this is a result of a global financial architecture that has become outdated, dysfunctional, and unfair. He called for reform of the UN Security Council and the Bretton Woods institutions. On climate change, he reiterated his call to the G7 countries to reach net zero emissions as close as possible to 2040 and for emerging economies to do so as quick as possible, as close as possible to 2050. His remarks were shared with you. And while in Hiroshima, he also paid tribute to the victims of the atomic bombings of that city. And he reiterated the United Nations stands with them and that he will never stop pushing for a world free of nuclear weapons. He also met with several leaders on the margin of the summit and participated in two sessions on the first day. Uh, this morning, you will have seen Volker Pertes, the Sec uh, Secretary General Special Representative for Sudan, brief Security Council members. He told them that he welcomed the new developments in which an agreement was signed two days ago between the parties. Mr. Pertis told council members that he continues to urge those parties to honor their agreement, and he underscored that the agreement short, that the agreed to short-term ceasefire could and should pave the way for talks for a durable cessation of hostilities, adding that the UN political mission in uh, Sudan, Nudetams, stands ready to support monitoring mechanism for a longer-term agreement for a per or, excuse me, or for a permanent ceasefire. Uh, Mr. Pertis will be at the stakeout as soon as consultations are done. On the humanitarian, a, a, excuse me, on the humanitarian end, I can tell you that we, along with our partners, are continuing to do everything we can, um, uh, we can to uh, scale up deliveries of life-saving assistance to those in need in Sudan. The World Food Program, for instance, has so far reached nearly 450,000 people with food and nutrition support since the distribution resumed on May 3rd. Um, WFP plans to start distributions in Wadi Halfa in northern state to more than 90,000 people who are fleeing to Egypt. The food agency is also planning to assess the needs of over half a million men, women, and children who are currently trapped in Khartoum. Uh, that assessment should start in the coming days if the security situation allows us to do that. UNICEF and its partners are providing uh, access to clean water and sanitation, as well as hygiene in key locations. In North Darfur, UNICEF has helped to deliver some 235,000 liters of clean water to healthcare facilities, and in East Darfur, it provided clean water to some 40,000 people in the El Nin camp for internally displaced people. The UN Population Fund has provided fuel for four maternity hospitals in Khartoum to ensure life-saving health services are available for women and girls who need it. Uh, turning to Mali, I have yet an, uh, another update that highlights the persistent threats that our peacekeeping colleagues are facing every day as they try to uh, do their work. Four our, of our peacekeepers were injured yesterday when an armored vehicle providing security to a logistics convoy hit an improvised explosive device that took place about 12 kilometers northwest of our camp in Tessalit in the Kidal region. The peacekeepers who are from Sri Lanka suffered minor injuries and received medical treatment immediately. About 40 minutes after the incident, a search of the surrounding areas discovered a second improvised explosive device, which was successfully detonated. Earlier in the day, the mission detonated, yet uh, another IED discovered some 23 kilometers northwest of the Tessalit camp in a different location. And just linking up to peacekeeping, uh, it's a busy week on the peacekeeping front this week. Uh, as you know, every year on May 29th, we mark International Day of UN Peacekeepers. This year, we also celebrate the 75th anniversary of UN peacekeeping under the global theme, Peace Begins With Me. We have a few events to flag. Thursday, 
uh, the 25th, the Secretary General will lay a wreath in honor of the fallen peacekeepers. That takes place at the peacekeeping memorial site in the North Lawn. He will also take part in the Dag Hammarskjöld ceremony to honor the women and men who lost their lives last year while serving in UN peacekeeping. And he will confer the UN Military Gender Advocate Award um, this year to a Ghanaian peacekeeper, Captain Cecilia Erzua, and we, congratulating her, we congratulate her. She serves with the UN mission in Abia, and she will receive the award. Uh, all the ceremonies will be uh, live on web TV. Also on Thursday, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of the Peace Operations Department, will be our guest right here at the, at the briefing. And on Friday, our peacekeeping colleagues partnering with the Inside Out Project by the street artist named J.R. Uh, will have a special art project in Times Square right here in Manhattan. It features portraits of peacekeepers and community members and celebrate all those who work together for the cause of global peace. Uh, you're welcome to join us at these events, um, and you can also follow uh, all of them on UN Peacekeeping's digital platforms, and there'll be uh, press releases later this week, if not today. Quick update on, from the Joint Coordination Center uh, in Istanbul, uh, which oversees the Black Sea Initiative. Um, they are they're telling us that the Joint Coordination Center is currently in receipt of 17 applications of new vessels to participate in the uh, initiative. Out of those, seven were registered and are waiting for inspection. Since May 19th, nine inbound vessels were inspected and cleared, and five of those vessels are now loading in the port of Odessa and Chomomorsk. The port of Yuzhny, uh, Pivzny, Pivz, Pivzdeny, has not received any vessels uh, since May 2nd. We are concerned by this restriction, and we call again for the full implementation, uh, full resumption of operations. Since the beginning of the initiative, more than 30 million metric tons of food and fertilizers have been exported from Ukrainian ports. There's been no export so far of fertilizers, including ammonia, under the terms of the initiative from Ukrainian ports. Uh, one week after Cyclone Mocha, uh, Maka excuse me, hit Myanmar with devastating force, a clear picture is now emerging of the depth of the devastation as humanitarian works expand assistance across affected areas. Shelter damage is significant across all communities. There are shortages and soaring prices of critical items, especially of shelter materials, which pose a challenge for reconstruction efforts, as you can imagine. Destruction of public infrastructure as well as disruptions to water systems continues to limit access to clean drinking water in Rakhine, increasing the risk of waterborne diseases. Health centers, hospitals, schools have also been damaged or destroyed in the coastal areas. Efforts are underway to transport additional supplies to the impacted areas to uh, address stockpile shortages pending the necessary uh, approvals for movement within and without, from within and from outside the country. Tomorrow, we do expect to launch a flash appeal to help our efforts. Um, quick note from the UN uh, Children's Fund. <coughs> they warned today that, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it's clearly. <coughs> UNICEF uh, today warned that children in the Horn of Africa are living through an unprecedented large-scale large crisis of hunger, displacement, water scarcity, and insecurity. UNICEF noted that more than 7 million children under the age of 5 remain malnourished and in need of urgent nutrition support, and over 1.9 million children are at risk of dying from severe malnutrition. UNICEF pointed out that while the rains have brought some reprieve, it's also led to floods as the parched ground is unable to absorb large quantities of water so quickly, leading to further displacement, increased risk of waterborne diseases, livestock loss, and crop damage. Um, quick note from the colleagues of the UN country team in Guyana. They said in a statement today, they are devastated to hear of the deaths of 20 children and injuries to several others as a result of an early morning fire at a secondary school dormitory. The country team sends its deepest condolences to the families of the victims and wishes a speedy recovery to those injured. Uh, the UN is in touch with the Office of the Prime Minister to see how we can help. Uh, we've been getting some questions about um, our friend Stefan Dimistora, the personal envoy for Western Sahara, 
and the speculation that we have seen uh, in some press quarters that he is considering stepping down. And I just want to say that that is, in fact, just speculation and, in fact, completely false. Um, the personal envoy is planning to maintain and intensify engagements with all concern and broader international support in a variety of formats, including uh, regional visits and bilateral opportunities. Mr. Dimistor appreciates the support of the members of the Security Council, as well as the group of Friends for Western Sahara, as recently evidenced in his meetings in New York. Uh, today, the World Meteorological Congress opened to, in Geneva with a focus on scaling up action to ensure early warning services to reach everyone on Earth by the end of 2017. Um, to, uh, more is available online. And today is also the International Day for Biological Diversity. In a message, the Secretary General warns that our actions are devastating every corner of the planet, and he calls for an end of the war on nature that we are waging. He underscores that last year's agreement on the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework marked an important step and now it is time to move from agreement to action. Finally, I'm going to test your geography and historical knowledge, uh, thanks to our quiz master, Jane Gaffney. Uh, we have received payment from a member state, bringing us up to 108th. That member state is the birth, uh, the capital of that member state is the birthplace of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Nope. No, uh, not Albany, not Albania. Whether in French or English, both answers are wrong. Albania. Exactly. It is, uh, she was born in Skopje, uh, the capital of North Macedonia. Anyone remember the name of the mediator of the name issue? Suc who successfully negotiated the name? Matthew Nimitz, our good friend. Okay, uh, let's go to the man who won. I have to say that I cheated. I Googled it. But I mean, like, I was fast, at least. I, I, I tell you, if we were in an academic setting, your pass would be revoked and you would be sent. Anyway, but I'll, this let, is I'll not, let it go. So. I'll let it go for now. OK, but I have a question. Uh, the possibility of fighter jets for Ukraine, is that something the SG um, follows with concern? We've, I don't think we've been commenting, and I know we've not been commenting on the various uh, shipments of, of weapons into the theater of war. I think as the Secretary General has repeatedly said, our aim is to see an end to this conflict, an end to this war in line with the Charter, uh, international law, and re relevant GA resolutions. Uh, Edie, then Pam, then Joe. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, can you tell us um, whether the Secretary General had any kind of an extensive conversation with President Zelensky on the margins of the G7, and if so, what the uh, discussion uh, centered on, including, I'm sure, the uh, Black Sea Grain no, Initiative. Uh, he did not see President Zelensky, uh, one, for logistical reasons. The Secretary General was at the G7 venue the first day. Uh, Mr. President Zelensky came in the second day, or late, late at night in the first day. He was not at the dinner that the Secretary General attended with, uh, with world leaders. Uh, I, I would add that the Secretary General saw President Zelensky recently, has been, is in, often in touch uh, with his colleagues and, and with him, but they did not see each other uh, in, uh, in Japan. And two other questions. One, a request. I am sure we would all... Uh, like to have another press conference with the Secretary General when that is uh, possible. I, and, and I, I will pass that on. Right. And secondly, um, there's been a lot of uh, talk both at the G7 and elsewhere on um, the growing positive benefits, but also the increasing perils of artificial intelligence. And there's been discussion about who should
take the lead in trying to do something about this? Isn't this an issue that the United Nations should be spearheading? I think this is an issue that the Secretary General has expressed extreme worry uh, about. Uh, the lack of regulation, uh, the lack of, um, of safeguards, especially when it comes to autonomous uh, weapons, and I think he's been very clear on that. It's one of the things that keeps him up at night. Um, I think you will hear, we, we should be releasing soon uh, our latest policy paper on, uh, on, on the Global Digital Compact. We'll have our tech envoy here uh, to, to brief you, I think, next, uh, next week or, yeah, I think next, next week. Um, the issue, uh, on the issue of tech, this is something that we have been bringing together various stakeholders into governmental uh, stakeholders, whether it's governments, uh, the private sector, uh, civil society. I think, you know, unlike um, other issues that we deal with, it is clear when it comes to technology and, and artificial intelligence and social media, let's not forget uh, the, the challenges that we're still trying to deal with with the not so artificial intelligence um, and the challenges of, uh, of social, of the lack of responsibility of a lot of social media companies. Uh, but these are things that need to be dealt with in, in within uh, what we love to refer as uh, multi-stakeholder settings because it is clear that the, in this regard, the power is not solely in the hands of governments. It is very much also in the private sector. And the UN has been uh, and will continue to try to bring all these people to the table. Uh, Pam, then Joe, and then we'll go here. Thank you, Steph. Uh, <clears throat> as I'm sure you know, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine um, had a seventh, the seventh power outage uh, today. We've heard from the IAEA. Does the Secretary General believe that uh, there is some way to protect this plant from shelling? And is there any position that he holds on the Ukraine call to get Russian uh, troops out of the plant? Well, I mean, I, I think the best way to protect the plant would be to stop the fighting in and around the plant, right? I mean, that's, uh, we, I mean, I've seen the reports uh, in the media of the IEA uh, possibly bringing something to, to the Security Council. I think you'd have to ask them. We've expressed our, our, our deep worry about the situation in and around uh, the plant, and we expressed that uh, in our contacts with the Russian Federation as well as with, uh, as well as with Ukraine. Um, has that included any calls for Russia uh, to withdraw from the plant that it took early in the war? Uh, listen, I think that we need to see a stop uh, to the fighting in and around that plant. Mr. Klein, and I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. Yes, uh, regarding uh, Sudan, um, I didn't hear anything from the reports this morning uh, concerning uh, the issue of flow of arms into Sudan to either side in the conflict from countries outside of Sudan, such as Egypt. Um, is the UN or any part of the UN uh, continuing to give attention to that issue? And if so, can you elaborate? Um, what, we, what we would want to see is the international community, including a regional uh, powers to do whatever they can to bring peace uh, to Sudan. And we're seeing the fruit of those efforts in terms of uh, discussions that have been taking place, which will hopefully lead to uh, this uh, ceasefire that we've, uh, that Mr. Pertus talked about. I don't, uh, my understand, I'm not aware of any monitoring uh, by experts of the UN on, on the arms flow, but obviously as in anywhere else, we would like to see a flow of peace as opposed to a flow of arms. Yes, sir, and then I'll come to you. <clears throat> in Russia, something uh, resembling civil conflict has reportedly begun. Uh, the guerrilla units of Freedom Russia, they call themselves, claim uh, to be liberating the Belgorod region from Russiaism and creating a security strip on Russia's western border. Uh, Ukraine is reportedly not directly involved in it. Uh, what is your reaction to what is happening? 
I, I that's the first I've heard of it. So let me look into it. I, I not seen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. On Bangladesh, just ahead of national election, Bangladesh regime is attacking on opposition and they're arresting people. And uh, we have seen that even resident coordinator, Luis, is developed her engagement with the opposition and the government. So what is the UN Secretary General position on Bangladesh in election as Bangladesh experienced two farcical election in 2014 and 2018? What we, our, our message is clear, and that is our message also to any country's holding election, is that we would want to see in Bangladesh uh, peaceful, credible, and inclusive elections. Mr. Bulkati. Thank you, Stefan. I have a follow-up on the question of my Ukrainian colleague. Have you heard the interpretation of this occasion uh, given by the Russian Defense Ministry, which says that the attack on the civilian, Russian civilian uh, a uh, little town was conducted by the uh, sabotage group of the Ukrainian forces. Uh, in 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 the the ninety seconds or let's say sixty seconds that have evaporated between his question and your question, I have not heard. I've not I, I've not heard anything about this incident. I hadn't heard when he asked me, and I still haven't heard. So let me look into it, and I will react accordingly if needed. Uh, yes, sir. Today, Peter Stano of the uh, Euro Commission said that the uh, European Union uh, will not reconnect uh, Rosselhosbank, uh, Russian Agriculture Bank, uh, to SWIFT uh, till the end of the conflict. Uh, uh, do you think uh, it will influence uh, the situation uh, around the grain deal? Well, you know, we... we uh, first of all, we will continue to do whatever we can to facilitate the trade, and that includes through uh, the Russian Agricultural Bank. Uh, there are ways, there there are ways of of these uh, transactions to be done outside of the of the SWIFT system. Obviously, if there was within SWIFT, it would be easier. Uh, but we will continue to engage with all our interlocutors, including the European Union the UK, the US, uh, Russia, and others, uh, to try to facilitate this trade. And this is something Rebecca Greenspan is constantly working on. OK, let me go to the screen first, and then I will come back and take round uh, round two. Uh, but I don't s Oh, Abdel Hamid, please. Thank you, Mr. Uh, the first thing is that the Ukrainian government has been and before that, the You very clearly, uh, it, let's try again. Uh, just try to uh, ask a very succinct question, and I'll try to figure out what you're asking about. I'm asking about the development yesterday in the Israeli cabin, met under an absolute in the summer. And they allocated 18 million to increase taking more funds under an absolute. There were statements from all, all, all over the world, except the United Nations. Why do you end up not see these major developments? I think if you're referring to the visit um, uh, by the Israeli government official uh, to the holy sites uh, in, uh, in, in Jerusalem, I can tell you that obviously the, the visit uh, by the minister was followed by grave concern by the Secretary uh, General, um, and as well as the, the alarming and, and provocative rhetoric that we saw around that, uh, that visit. The Secretary General calls on political, religious, community leaders to prevent such acts and reject inflammatory rhetoric. The status quo of the holy sites must be respected in line with the special and historical uh, responsibilities and role of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan as uh, the custodian of those sites in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. Uh, Pam. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. On, uh, since this is Ocha week, there is an anticipated report from multi-agencies on displacement of children 
um, millions of children around the world and their vulnerability to violence. Do you know anything or can comment about it? Nope. But uh, we can find out from our Thank OCHA you. friends at OCHA Week. Yes, sir. Another question. Today, <clears throat> the NATO Parliamentary Assembly recognized the crimes of the Russian Federation against Ukraine as genocide and uh, the terrorist regime in Russia as Russianism. Your comment on that? As we've said uh, many times on the issue of, uh, of genocide that is for the UN needs to be, is a legal definition and there needs to be a, a finding by a competent body within the UN. Okay, uh, Pamela, uh, Paulina, uh, we could ask Pam to brief. <laughs> <laughs>